My name is Mark Andrews. I'm the head of sales at Object Matrix. Object Matrix is a Welsh based company. Um, we're kind of dealing in the archive space. Uh, traditionally, people think of archiving, they tend to think of tape. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about disk based archiving. We have a flagship product called the Matrix Store, which is a, a disk based product. But what I was going to do was just kind of go through some scenarios with you and then talk a bit, a little bit more about, uh, about the Matrix Store. So traditional archiving in the olden days, we had a tape that came in. To archiving, there's nothing new to archiving. So tape would come in, ingest on your sand, that tape would effectively then go and sit on your shelf, and that would effectively be your, your Russ's archive, and your finished project again go off the tape, and that would, again, that's your archive. Obviously, the issues with tape, there's your metadata. There's always that problem, where is it? It's not online. We archived it a year ago, I, I have no idea. And trying to reutilize, repurpose content becomes very, very difficult. So in modern day, file-based workflows, obviously these days there's no tape to put on a shelf. Effectively, what we've got, we've got a card comes in, that gets ingested on the SAN, finished product typically gets put onto a tape, and that goes on the shelf. What happens to the rushes? Once you delete the P2 card, you know, have to think about how we're going to archive the rushes. So some of the digital file challenges we've got these days, with the move from SD to HD, to 3D, this is great for a storage vendor. It's lots and lots of storage, but you know, as users, it becomes a kind of a, a, a management nightmare. So, in terms of protecting content, ensure it's authentic. Graham talked about doing checksums. You know, if you're going to hit delete on your card, do you know you've got authentic copies residing in your SAN? Re repeatable. You don't want to keep reinventing the wheel every time. And the thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is protecting the metadata as well. So obviously there's metadata throughout your workflow. How do you protect that metadata and ensure it stays authentic and stored with your assets? So coping strategies. I'll talk a bit about this and hopefully some of these will kind of empathize with you. So typically you have a SAN, you fill it up, what do you do? A lot of people, they just buy more SAN. I don't know if this is familiar to you. Now, uh, SAN's great, it's super fast storage, but the problem with it, it's expensive and it's difficult to manage. And the bigger it gets, the more difficult it becomes to manage. And you can end up daily firefighting just to keep your SAN up and running. Another thing we see quite common is uh, I'm going to archive. If I'm going to put it onto a FireWire drive or onto a CD or a DVD, that's going to end up in a shelf. Again, you've got the problem it's not consolidated. How do you repurpose that content? How do you find what you need? Where is it? Where did I put it? Again, it becomes a management nightmare. And obviously, the trouble with FireWire, FireWire drives, unless you power them up continuously, then how do you know when you come to restore, it's still going to operate? Effectively, what we're doing as an organization is we're, we're forcing the IT into creativity. It's a typical, we, we send it to a lot of post-production houses, they don't have an IT department. You've got editors doing backups. They don't want to do backups, they want to do editing. You know, and they're having to learn how to do IT and, and kind of learn as they go along. You know, this, this is not what, you know, you know, the whole issue around doing IT, this isn't your core business and potentially, you know, you don't want to get stuck in the IT world unless you can help it. Is the uh, proverbial needle in the haystack? Just a little bit about metadata. Obviously, we, when you're storing an asset, you want to store that metadata with it. Um, there are obviously a lot of media asset management systems out there. Obviously, we have Synergy and the Final Cut Server, Avid with their interplay. Again, you know, it's protecting in the long term. How do you protect that metadata and find that asset? The asset and the metadata, I'd say they were equally as important. Spoke a bit about standards. Um, Chopper talked about MXFS and standards this morning. MXFS is, is a great example of a standard and the fact that Avid have a standard, the BBC have a standard, manufacturers have their own standard. All of a sudden, you know, which is the standard? So I was going to talk a little bit about the matrix store and Nearline disk archiving. So the, the way I think of Nearline, if Nearline's a new concept to you, if you, if you think of your, of your SAN as your tier one, your super fast editing storage, and it has a purpose, it's blindingly fast, and you know, that's, that's, that's what you want it to be. And then you've got your, your tier three storage at the other extreme, which is your tape, which once you've finished, you know, you want to archive. Do we want to put that onto tape? But there's a middle ground, which we call near line. So potentially, if you want to keep stuff online, keep it available, keep it searchable, keep it browsable, but, but at a price point which is compelling, then that's near line. So what near line isn't is a place for editing. That's your tier one, that's your fast storage. But rather than growing your SAN, grow your near line, but grow it at a price point which makes sense. So there's, there's three ways 
two different methods whereby we position the matrix store in terms of using a near line. Typically, a lot of companies, when they bring the content into their facility, they tend to just put it all onto their SAM. Now, when you've got shooting ratios of 40 to 1, 50 to 1, again, is that the most appropriate place to put that? You know, if, if there is a, a mechanism by which I can fill a much lower cost alternative and then only pull back what I need back to my SAM, then I can keep my SAM lean and mean and only put the content onto there that I need to do. Now, in terms of the matrix store, you're thinking, well, you know, is it a safe place to put that? The whole point of the matrix store is that it's been designed for resilience and security of data. So when we write content into the matrix store, first of all, we make two copies of it. So instantly you have the two copies. Back to the two copy mantra. If you don't have two copies, you don't have it. We authenticate, we check some. So you know when you hit delete on that card, you've got an authenticated bit for bit copy within the matrix store. And thirdly, what we can also do is actually lock down content as well. If you, if you know you've got um, an edit which is going on for three months and you mustn't under any circumstance delete any of those rushes, we can lock down that content for three months which prevents accidental or malicious deletion of that content. So again, it's that kind of peace of mind. But it's, it's all about resilience and security. And on top of that as well, and what kind of differs us from just a, just a bunch of unintelligent disks is the fact we can tag with metadata. So as content comes in, we can then start adding metadata to this content so it becomes searchable as well. Nearline parking, um, we have a customer UTV in Belfast. They were having issues with their SAN. They, they, it was running at 99% full. I, I, I don't know if that's familiar to a lot of you guys. You, you know, Everyone always wants to run their SAN at 99% full and wonder why it performs like a dog. And all of a sudden you've got that emergency edit coming in when you think, oh, we've got to free up a load of space. Let's just bin it off to tape. But always concerns with doing that kind of thing. All of a sudden, there is an alternative, and that's with the, the matrix store. We can be there as a temporary dumping ground. So we have workflows with Interplay and Final Cut where we effectively we can just pull content out of your SAN and temporarily put it into the near line. You've got your two copies, you've got your authentication, you can then hit delete on your SAN, safe in the knowledge when you bring it back, it's going to be there and it's going to be safe. And then this is where we start. The third way we position is kind of this kind of more longer term archive. So once you've finished your production, you need to put it somewhere safe. Maybe you want to repurpose, re reuse this content over time. It, it's, it's more that kind of long term. And traditionally, this is where you would have put this onto tape and stuck it on a shelf. Obviously, there's issues with stuff on, on, ta on tape, as we've said. But if all of a sudden you can start being able to repurpose and reutilize content and find content from a year, two years, five years ago, and browse it uh, online, then, then, then obviously there's added business benefit for that. Now, the issue around long term Storage is, is, is the long-term digital preservation. If you want to keep content for one year, two years, five years, ten years in perpetuity, you know, how do you avoid being locked into a particular hardware vendor? And again, part of our um, USP is the fact that we're a software company. We're not a hardware company. So what that means is that over time, as we all know, storage evolves, CPUs get faster, storage gets cheaper. And if you buy into a particular hardware vendor, you're kind of, they've got you by the data, as I like to call it. So as a software company, we can, over time, we can look around and use best of breed. So you've got one two terabyte, two terabyte drives, three terabyte drives are just coming out now. Um, what's down the road? Solid state drives, holographic technology, who knows? But the nice thing is, because we're not locked into any particular hardware vendor, we have a concept of nodes with clustered storage. And you can grow in a just-in-time fashion. So a node with the latest technology, you can put that in and effectively take advantage of evolving technology. In three years, five years down the line, when the older nodes have come a bit long in the tooth, you can then migrate in place. If you've ever been through a data migration exercise of a, of a 100, 200 terabyte archive, it becomes a real nightmare. And especially if that's all residing on tape and you've got LTO3 drives, but LTO3 tapes, but you've only got LTO6 drives, LTO will only go back two iterations. So you, again, you know, you start getting to issues where you can't physically read the content back because you don't have the hardware in place to do that. And again, with our kind of hardware obsolescence, strategy, we kind of avoid that and it takes away that, that nightmare of data migration. So in summary, the matrix store, what is it? It is a clustered disk archive. Are we trying to replace tape? No, we're trying to complement tape. Are we trying to compete with like the edit shares, the avid? No, we're trying to complement those. We're a near line. We're not there to edit off. We're purely there to complement. So rather than growing your SAN, you grow your near line at a price point much, much lower, but in a way that's very secure. In terms of our customer base, we, we, we sold into broadcasters, 
uh, BBC, uh, British Telecom are a customer. Banks, nice thing about banks, uh, as a company we've been around eight years, but our heritage is, actually goes back um, into compliance and governance. What that means is that we, 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 the whole security being able to lock content down um, and, and show that it hasn't been tampered with over time. So this makes it very appealing for banks. Banks are building their own TV studios at the moment. Um, and they're wondering, you know, do we have to be compliant? We're not sure. I tell you what, let's not take the risk. We'll be compliant in any case. Post-production facilities. So we've got workflows working with Avid, with Media Composer. To point Media Composer at Matrix Store, do scene selection and only pull the scenes back you need back to the, uh, back to the, uh, the ISIS or the Unity. Again, we've got interplay integration as well. Um, ad agencies, uh, VFX, uh, animation. And anybody creating content effectively where they need a safe, secure place to put their content. Uh, no pricing, very, very transparent about our pricing. I'm happy, happy to talk about that. We do have a demo suite downstairs, so if anybody wants to kind of look at some of our client tools and what we do and have a quick demonstration of the, of the solution, I can do that. Um, and that's me done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bob.